Hello students, welcome you all to this online class of science with me. My name is Abhishek and you are watching the channel Viganam. So, uh, I hope that we had already completed the part 1 and part 2 of our previous chapter that is coal and petroleum very well and you have made a very clear concept about the fuels, fossil fuels and uh, how they made, isn't it? And now we are going to uh, start another new chapter that is combustion and flame. So, in our daily life we use different kind of fuels for various purposes at home, right? as we are already familiar with the fuel. So if anyone asks you that what kind of fuel will you use to run your automobiles, obviously you will name petrol and diesel, right? Or you can say it in our homes, we will use what? We will use LPG, right or not? So LPGs, petroleum products like petrol, diesel, wood, coal, etc. These all are what these all are the examples of the fuels which we use in our daily life and these fuels are used where where do we use them these, we use these fuels to run many large industries many manufacturing industries as well as in our homes in our daily life so the question arises that as we are already familiar with all these kind of things but if you say means if anyone will ask you that if you try to burn a candle so obviously a candle will burn with a flame right a, c a candle will burn with a flame but what will happen when we burn the coal when we will burn a coal the coal will not burn with a flame right or not yes so a candle burns with a flame but the coal does not candle burns with a flame whereas the coal does not so it does so it means that there are many substances which used to burn with flame and many substances which used to burn without flame. So the total motive of this chapter is to find out the concept of the combustion and how these things work, isn't it? So the question arises that what is combustion? So to find out the meaning of the combustion what we can do we can do an activity you all can do same type of activity if you have remembered the burning of magnesium in your class 7 we had already performed this activity that burning of magnesium ribbon which we have performed in class 7 and what we have found that when we had taken a china dish and when we used to burn a magnesium ribbon what had happened that a magnesium ribbon formed an white ash isn't it a white ash so it was a completely what it was completely a chemical process if you will find that there is an example of the burning of magnesium ribbon here we have the example of the burning of the magnesium ribbon that the mag magnesium ribbon is burning here with a white flame and the white ash here so it's completely what a chemical process okay so what is combustion? A combustion is none other than a chemical process in which a substance reacts with oxygen. To give off heat is called combustion. Okay. Whenever a substance is burned, whenever a substance is burning in presence of oxygen to give heat is known as what? Combustion. And a substance that undergoes combustion is said to be combustile. Obviously, anything that is getting that undergoes combustion is said to be what combustile so it is called also called what fuel as we are already familiar with the word fuel so fuel are also termed as what combustile substances so anything that burns comes under what fuel or combustile substances fuel may be what it may be solid it may be liquid or gas we are already familiar with the coal gas isn't it so sometimes light is also given off during combustion either as a flame or as a glow as when the coal burns coal does not give fl flame but it glows okay coal when the coal uh, gets burned it glows but it does not give any flame remember this okay so in the reaction mentioned above that the magnesium and the charcoal are combustile substances so in case of reaction what will be the reaction magnesium when the magnesium will burn in presence of oxygen what it will produce it will produce magnesium oxide right 
Similarly, when the charcoal, like the carbon, uh, comes under charcoal, when the carbon reacts with oxygen, what it will produce? It will produce carbon dioxide. Okay. So these are the reactions. As we are already told that our body produces uh, means our food. whatever the food we used to eat that food works as fuel in our body so you are already familiar with the term respiration in your class 7 you have already familiar with the term respiration what happens in respiration the food that we eat that is glucose c6h12o6 when it burns with oxygen reacts with oxygen what it produce carbon dioxide water and energy right it is a delta sign it is known as what energy so this complete process is known as what respiration the food that we are eating when reacts with oxygen it produce what carbon dioxide water and heat and the, we our body use that heat to do many kinds of work if you have remembered this reaction in your class 7 so what you have to do now that you have to Uh, do one activity in your home that you have to make this chart of material then after burning some material uh, after burning those materials one by one you have to mark them combustible and non combustible okay like if we uses the material like wood what it will do it is combustible material obviously it is not a non combustible material it's a combustible material but in case of paper it will always also come under the combustible material but in case of the iron nail it will not come under the combustible it will come under what non combustible material so similarly like this you have to make the chart of chart of this in your notebook isn't it and if you want you can add many other names of the materials okay so now in case of activity 2 if you want to do this activity 2 you can also do this in your home that if you have remembered of class 6 that in class 6 we had we were familiar with the term that anything that burns burning need what burning need air and air contains what oxygen okay so here we can see the example of these candles so when at first the candle is uh at first the candle was burning and when we put a glass jar over it as there is a small hole at the below of this glass jar so this candle was burning continuously right but when we remove this wooden bars what happen the pros, uh, the area of going the air inside the glass jar get diminished or get lowered so it starts what it start flickering okay the flame starts flickering and at last when we put a cover over the glass jar what happened finally it extinguished right so with the help of this example we can also understood very well that for burning anything what we need we need oxygen and oxygen is present where in air okay you have also familiar with the term that whenever any person whenever the clothes of any person catches fire what we do we used to cover that person with the blanket what this blanket do this blanket removes the means this blanket becomes a bar in between the air and the cloth so if the clothes is catching fire with the help of that oxygen which is present in air so the blanket do what this blanket becomes a bar in between the air and the clothes which does not allow the air to go uh, to go and catches fire with the clothes okay so whenever a person got fire what we have to do we must cover that person with a blanket okay now you must have heard about the forest fire so this forest fire what how does the forest fire happens during extreme heat of summer what happened at some places dry grasses catches fire okay the dry grasses catches fire uh, which spread into the trees and when those spread into the uh, when those 
uh, heat spread into the trees the whole forest soon catches the fire and it becomes very difficult to control that kinds of fire right so you must have experienced these kind of things or you must have heard these in your newses means in in our daily newses do you know how a matchstick burn so do you think that anything will burn means any combustible substance will burn at any temperature so have you ever seen that a matchstick is burning in our room temperature no here are so many questions asked in your notebook in in your book that does a matchstick burn by itself how does it burn obviously a matchstick does not burn by itself you must have heard or had an experience of the burning of piece of paper does it burn when a burning matchstick is bought near it obviously not directly whenever a burning matchstick is bought near a paper obviously it will not burn directly it will take some time why the question arises here why why do we need to put some fuels over the paper why do we had to put some kerosene oil to start catching fire and to uh, why do we need to put some kerosene oil or petrol or diesel or some kinds of fuel over the wood or coal for burning them so the question arises here so to give the answer of this question the answer will be what anything that catches fire at their ignition temperature so ignition temperature is that lowest temperature at which a substance catches fire okay so any substance like a matchstick or a piece of paper so each and everything will burn at their ignition temperature until and unless they acquire or they reaches their ignition temperature they will not start burning right they will not start burning so the reason behind the burning of any substance is complete the the ignition temperature remember the point ignition temperature so here is uh, one of the yellow box given in your book where you can easily find out about the history of the matchstick and in short i will tell you that what happens in case of the matchstick that in our in ancient egypt what happened they used to make the small piece of the pine wood dipped in the sulfur which was very dangerous at that time to burn but nowadays the safety matchstick comes which comes with the mixture of antimony trisulfide potassium chloride and with the white phosphorus white phosphorus also sometimes catches fire very vigorously so nowadays what happens uh, the safety matchstick uses this antimony trisulfide potassium chloride and the red phosphorus red phosphorus when burns with the uh, means when catches fire at first due to the friction okay when we rub the match at the surface what happens it catches fire due to the friction so the red phosphorus catches fire due to the friction which converted into white phosphorus and this white phosphorus later give the ignition temperature to the potassium chloride and the antimony trisulfide which used to burn okay and that's how the matchstick burn so Uh, i request everyone to read this paragraph very carefully you will get so many ideas about the matchstick here is an activity in uh, activity 6.4 you can perform it in your home that here we can take two filter papers or not a filter paper take a similar uh, take a normal paper and make them into a cone shape in one paper add water and in another paper left it as it is so try to burn or try to uh, just burn the paper over the candle what you will observe that the paper which is having the water almost add or um, 50 to 60 ml of water what you will observe that you can even boil the water which is present inside the cone shaped paper but in case of paper which does not have any kinds of water what it will happen it will con- it will directly burn okay why this will happen and why this is happen can you guess why it is happening you must have heard about conduction right in your class 7 you have already heard about conduction so what happens here 
that when the heat is transferred to the paper this paper transfer the heat to the water okay heat is for, first the heat transferred to the paper and the paper transferring the heat to the water and that's how the water does not allow the paper to reach its ignition temperature and that's why the the paper is not getting burned okay the paper is not catching fire then but as in uh in this picture the paper does not contain any kinds of water where the paper is catching uh, the fire because it is directly reaching its ignition temperature but in case of uh, water the water is having the heat indirectly with the help of what conduction okay with the help of what conduction there are three types of thing that is conduction convection and radiation if you have already read about this in chapter in your class 7 so i hope that you are already familiar with these terms very well now come to the another point that if this will happen what we will see about these things means so these things will comes under which category so the substance which have the low ignition temperature and can easily catches fire as a flame are called inflammable substances any substance which will catch fire directly which uh, comes under what inflammable substances okay for example inflammable substances are what petrol alcohol liquefied petroleum like the lpg etc so these all comes under what inflammable substances so if anything catches fire here we have an example of a fireman who is extinguishing the fire by throwing the water under pressure so why does a fireman put the water over the fuel as uh, uh, means i am using this uh, building as a fuel why because the fuel is burning so it's a combustible material so it comes under what fuel okay <coughs> so th this fireman is putting the what water what this water will help means how this water will help in extinguishing the fire can you guess what will happen actually when this water will fall over the fuel okay when this water will fall over the fuel as you have already familiar with the term density in your last chapter we are already familiar with the term density where we had seen that water is heavier than what oil obviously water is heavier than oil so what will happen the substances which is responsible for burning this house okay like maybe it's oil or anything which is catching fire because of the presence of air which contains what oxygen so what will happen finally this water will get over the surface of this building okay means as the water is heavier than the oil so they will get below the surface of this building so ultimately the water will not allow the air to directly get in contact with the surface of the of this building because the water will become as a bar in between the air and the surface of this building so so at final so at last what will happen the water will extinguish the fire okay that's why the firemen uh, first do what they first used to pour the water over a uh, building which is on fire okay but what will happen if you are using such kind of substances which are electrical so you are already familiar with the term that electricity is not good for water means obviously water is not good for electricity at that case what we will do we will use the fire extinguisher like this you have already seen this kind of things in your schools or any buildings okay what it do it contains what carbon dioxide as carbon dioxide is heavier than oxygen because oxygen only contains o2 whereas carbon dioxide already contain o2 as well as one carbon extra so it becomes heavier so this carbon dioxide do the same phenomena as the water did in case of extinguishing the fire 
as it is heavier so it will go down and it will become a bar in between the oxygen and the building which is catching the fire okay and that's why we use this was fire extinguisher because water is not a good uh thing for the electrical appliances so in that case what we use is carbon dioxide because carbon dioxide has its own advantage that it 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 do what it controls the fire as well as it has its own advantage that it is in most case it does not harm the electrical appliances it do what it does not harm the electrical appliances okay so here i am completing the part 1 of this chapter i hope that you all have understood the chapter very well if you have any kind of uh, doubts in the chapter you can ask me in the comment section or in the message in whatsapp so i hope that you have already understood the chapter very well thank to uh, thank you all god bless you all